Now, of course, one of the great questions of um, American history is what would have happened. And uh, uh, one of the uh, student asked this a couple of weeks ago. You know, what would have happened had Abraham Lincoln not been assassinated? Um, we'll, we'll never know. Um, I will say this, though. The, the politics of post-war uh, America, the post-war United States, were deeply, deeply uh, complex. Um, four million African Americans had been freed, but yet uh, they gained freedom uh, in a very, very deeply racist society. Uh, and I'm not even talking about the white South. Uh, I'm also talking about the North as well. Um, one of the one of the historical aspects, sobering historical realities, when you look hard at the Civil War and what the Union was fighting for and you know, I think most of you know by now, the Union, most people in the North were fighting to uh, keep the Union together, especially Northern whites, um, and that emancipation was a, a, a means to that end. It was never the primary end in itself for most Northern whites, not all, but most. And of course, for African Americans in the North, especially those almost 200,000 who fought uh, for the Union Army and, and to a lesser extent the Union Navy in lesser numbers. Of course, those folks were primarily fighting for emancipation. But for most whites in the United States, uh, uh, race was still, uh, most whites still considered African Americans inferior. And there were biologically inferior, intellectually inferior, emotionally inferior. Uh, Lincoln, by the time he died, um, he had moved a fair way down the fair ways down the road towards not exact equality, but he was starting to think about um, giving limited suffrage, limited suffrage, and suffrage means the right to vote to uh, to uh, at least uh, initially anyway a small group of African Americans. He'd been very impressed um, with how uh, blacks had fought uh, in the Union Army during the Civil War with the bravery that African Americans had shown. Uh, in the Union Army after the Civil War, the sacrifices they had made. And so he's starting to think about uh, giving at least a portion of African-American males the right to vote, Union veterans, literate African-Americans. Um, and certainly by the time he's killed, Lincoln has completely abandoned in the, uh, the, the ridiculous idea of colonization. Um, it, Took him a while, but that's that's gone by the board. He, he that's just uh, an abs he realizes, although he never really talks about it, what an absurd idea that is. And that's the whole colonization scheme. And I did talk about it in earlier podcasts. That's really one of the most embarrassing episodes of uh, Abraham Lincoln's career. And I think there's a pretty good reason that it's not remembered very well because it doesn't really fit into the myth of the great emancipator that had he had his way, at least up until 1863, uh, he would have wished African Americans completely out of the United States. But let's give him credit for growth. Um, that is, I think, the greatness of Abraham Lincoln, uh, his ability to evolve on, on a situation, um, a, a social or a political situation. And he's in a wholly different place when it comes to race relations by the time he died. Uh, than really he'd been for most of his life. But nonetheless, um, he's not really an accurate reflection of where most white whites in the North were, certainly whites in the South, who were uh, completely um, outraged at the loss of, of their property of four million slaves. And many whites in the North uh, just didn't care about African Americans. And to the extent they thought about African Americans, they were afraid that blacks were going to come up from the South and take their jobs. So um, it's, you know, it's a very sad scene, and, and the, the Civil War, and one of the things I, I hope you get out of um, uh, this course is that by looking at the Civil War in, in maybe a more mature way, which I've tried to do or have you do in, in this course, you can understand why racism and why the Civil War ended with slavery dead but racism uh, completely alive and intact in the United States, as it still is to this very day. Um, another horrible example of that is Sherman's treatment of African Americans 
and the treatment of uh, Sherman soldiers, uh, treatment of African Americans on his march through Georgia. It was much more dangerous to be uh, a, a freed slave uh, in terms of sexual assault than it was to be a, a white Southern woman uh, because there's notions of gentility that Union soldiers, for the most part, felt towards white Southerners, that they don't feel towards African Americans because of their racism. Um, so anyway, the, uh, there are a number of examples, but let me just put it again in a nutshell, that s the Civil War kills slavery, but it certainly, certainly, certainly doesn't kill racism uh, in the United States. And um, I think there's a lot of confusion out there, and I, I, I often refer to the public and public memory of the Civil War uh, in this course because I think it's extremely powerful, and I, I think it guides policy, and I think it guides people's behavior and their ideas and their ideology. Um, and I think there are large portions of the Civil War that are misremembered. Uh, Sherman's March is a good example. Uh, Lincoln's attitude towards slavery is a good example. Um, and there's a lot of confusion. Um, and I think it's a lot of it's childish. Um, I think Americans feel like they need their heroes. They want their story clean. They don't want to see any complexity. Um, and, you know, I wish things were like that, but they're not. So anyway, um, to go back to Lincoln and... Um, one of the things I didn't talk about, but I think I'm going to mention briefly here, uh, it's in the last part of his presidency that Lincoln um, decides to uh, implement the, uh, 13, uh, the, the Emancipation Proclamation in the Constitution. Now, if you saw the movie Lincoln, which came out, what, four or five years ago, now time flies, this is what he, Spielberg is talking about. He's talking about Lincoln and uh, putting the Emancipation Proclamation into the Constitution. And the reason that Lincoln was so determined uh, uh, to have slavery abolished and have that uh, in the Constitution was that the Emancipation Proclamation was a war measure. And Lincoln knew that when the, once the war was over, then the measure would not have the same kind of clout or maybe no legal authority whatsoever once the war emergency was over. And remember that there are still slaves, even in you know places like Kentucky and Missouri and Delaware and Maryland, which never leave the Union. And so Lincoln, and I think Lincoln's very intelligent and he's very smart about this. He's determined to put uh, to abolish slavery and to, to create a constitutional amendment that abolished slavery, and um, so what he does is uh, he bribes uh, a couple of members of Congress uh, in in early 1865. What had happened is these folks had lost their reelection uh, in November of 64, but there's a gap between losing reelection and a new Congress coming in. So even though you lose your re-election, you, you still serve in Congress for another, another couple of months until a new Congress is, uh, is created, is, is organized. So this is what Lincoln does. He, he, he focuses on the members of Congress that had voted against a constitutional amendment abolishing slavery, who had lost the election, but they're still serving in Congress until the folks that beat them uh, are seated. And what he does is, and we know this for a, a fact, uh, he bribes these guys. He offers them jobs, uh, federal jobs. Uh, he, he does what it takes to get the votes. And ultimately, uh, and it, he, he plays, you know, I don't know what you would call it. I would call it realistic and smart. You might call it corrupt. But Lincoln gets what he wants. Uh, he gets enough congressmen that had opposed this constitutional amendment to vote for it. And so the 13th Amendment passes Congress uh, in early uh, 1865. And, and, you know, we know what's going to happen. We know Lincoln's going to get assassinated. So, I mean, the sense of urgency, I think he was very, very smart, very wise to really press the issue and not wait for a new Congress to come in. He just wanted the deal done. Boom. Get it over with. No ambiguity. 
And if, if, it take, if it took bribing some congressman, he didn't care. So the 13th Amendment passes Congress, and then very quickly in the 13th Amendment is the amendment that abolishes slavery uh, in the United States. It passes Congress, and then it quickly gains, it, you, if you remember your uh, political history, it has to have uh, two-thirds of the states uh, vote on it uh, as well, which, which uh, it did very, very quickly. Uh, I think I'd mentioned this to you before, but um, Mississippi actually didn't approve the 13th Amendment till the mid-90s, 1990s, not 1890s, 1990s. Um, and again, it didn't matter because two-thirds of the state had approved the, the 13th Amendment, but Mississippi didn't get there uh, uh, until about 20 years ago. Explains a lot, doesn't it? Uh, 